from group 40 and our topic of selection for EME 3 representation is flying fish and we got the idea inspired from a movie called Life of Pi. Let us watch a short clip from the movie. Alright, we're going to talk about how does a flying fish break surface tension and flies above water and we're going, to took, uh, we're going to look at two perspectives in terms of hypothesis. We're going to look at how much energy the fish requires for it to break the surface tension and we're going to relate it with the fish size and speed and also make an assumption that the fish fins is similar to an aerofoil of an aircraft which allows it to glide above water for some time. Let me pass it to my friend to discuss about the analysis. Okay, so for the first part of the hypothesis, we module the flying fish as a long cylinder with the length of L and radius of R. And to break the surface, I need to fight against two forces. The first one is the surface tension force, which is 2 pi times R times sigma divided by the sine theta. Here the theta is the angle it made with the horizon. And this second force is its weight. So the energy it requires for the flying fish to break the surface is actually mg plus f times L sine theta. And as we can see here, the, there's no velocity term in this energy. It's, there's only one length here. So we can see that the velocity is not, uh, the um, energy is not related to the flying fish velocity. But we do need to notice that the velocity is a great component, component as we talk about the behavioral gliding. So moving on to the second hypothesis, Normally, a flying fish gliding some distance above the water experiences drag because of the differences in air pressure over the fin's surface. The air pressure is higher below the fin than above it, and the high pressure below wants to move towards the low pressure. So this results in increasing the lift of the fish. Flying fish can stay airborne for distances up to 400 meters by coupling the ground effect with a behavior known as taxing in which they whip their tail through the water while still aloft to re-accelerate whenever they are in danger of sinking below the waves. Researchers found that when the fish glided exactly parallel to the water, they maximized their lift to drag ratio, ensuring they stayed airborne for as long as possible. So in conclusion, the energy required to break the surface tension only depends on the fish's size and not the speed of the fish. And finally, the fish fin acts as an aerofoil, thus it produces greater lift force compared to the weight of fish and causes it to propel in the air for some time.